I'm Shaya Feynman and I'm a professor of electrical engineering in, uh, at UCSD uh, and uh, I'm uh, uh, doing research in uh, ultra-fast phenomena and uh, nanoscale optics. We started uh, quite a few years back, probably in very early 90s. Uh, and uh, more recently we got uh, involved into uh, many uh, areas of nanophotonics including uh, silicon photonics, uh, uh, optofluidics combined with plasmonics for biosensing and most recently uh, into uh, nano lasers area where we capitalize a little bit on our uh, pioneering work on uh, uh, gain-assisted plasmonics which was published in uh, about early 2000 and uh, later we uh, were thinking of how to use it to create uh, quantum emitters. Our group mostly is uh, focusing uh, the research uh, during the past few years on localizing optical fields. Uh, you can do it using uh, uh, very high uh, dielectric constant materials or plasmonic localization. Uh, which led us to this uh, composite uh, semiconductor uh, dielectric metal uh, resonators and uh, light emitters, which uh, we are investigating for the past uh, five years. My name is Ching Gu. I'm a senior graduate student in the uh, ultrafast and nanoscale optics group at UCSD under um, the supervision of Professor Shia Feynman. Uh, my main project is uh, uh, electrically pumped nanolasers, although in, in our group we've demonstrated three types of nanolasers in the past few years. And our definition of nanolaser is that uh, it's sub-wavelengths, meaning it's smaller than the wavelengths of light emission in all three dimensions. And our focus is to make these nanolasers specifically designed for a dense chip scale integration. So that means we want to pack a lot of and this laser emitters uh, on the same chip. So in order to do that, we choose the um, what we call metallic met met dielectric cavity design. But basically, um, our all of our lasers have a metal cavity outside of it. Therefore, there's no crosstalk or um, coupling between different emitters on the same chip. So in the past, we've realized uh, one optically pumped nanolaser of this type that operates at room temperature. We've also realized one that's a coaxial design that's um, a, a really high efficiency and what we call a thresholdless nanolaser in, in the past, about two years ago. So currently we're working on making one of our nanolasers electrically pumped because that's the next step towards more practical applications. And that is uh, what I do here. So this is how we measure the lasers. This entire station is basically our laser characterization station. It's actually very versatile. Um, currently there are about four different set, uh, measurement setups that's going on and basically we can switch out mirrors for, for different researchers needs. So for my, uh, for my nano laser characterization, basically because it's electrically pumped, so we uh, do our measurement at different temperatures for characterization and we inject current into the laser which is sitting right in here. And the emitted light from the laser basically goes through this optical pass and we, here we have a monochromator that takes the spectral measurement. We can also stick in a camera and look at the IR, um, look at the image of the laser cavity on our camera. Uh, in the past, for optically pumped lasers, we also have a optical pumping setup, and basically, it's a and we use a 1064 laser to pump our nano laser that emits at the telecom wavelengths. So that's um, so if we switch between optically pumping and electrical pumping, we use the same station here. Our focus is to make um, is for dense chip scale integration. That's why we choose our cavity design such that a lot of them can be packed onto the same chip. But uh, so the first step to make these lasers is always to make optically pumped versions because that's how we 
verify the physics of design. Once that's realized, like we did in the past, then the next step towards more practical application would be making electrically pumped, which is why we're making this electrically pumped laser that has a very similar cavity design. But once it's current injection, then it will be easier for insertion. So basically, we're moving towards that direction. There are a lot of potential applications, I guess. One, one big thing is the optical interconnect, and where we want, to, want a lot of not only laser sources, but sources, in detectors, other components on the same chip, for example. And then um, in the recent years, like the high efficiency, low power consumption lasers are really hot topic. So if, like I, when I talk about the thresholdless laser, what I really meant is um, that all the emitted light goes into the lazy mode. So that's what we call like a high beta efficiency laser. So that, uh, that's also like a method towards um, low power consumption or efficient energy usage. We have been uh, working on this field localization quite a while, uh, motivated primarily by detection of biomolecules. Uh, and uh, uh, during the work on uh, nanolasers, we identified that the volume of the resonators are so small that they are sensitive to any perturbation, including uh, molecular binding events. One other example, we started in early 90s to look at dielectric metamaterials and most recently we uh, had some ideas how to make nonlinear metamaterials that have uh, much higher nonlinearities for very fast uh, uh, modulation of light where we combine these nonlinear metamaterials with uh, resonant nano cavities that very similar to the ones that we used for the nanolasers. And uh, with this uh, approach, we hope to achieve uh, ultra small energy, low energy modulation of light uh, towards speeds of uh, terahertz per second. And this uh, work was uh, recently funded by uh, uh, DOD MURI program. We are trying to find projects and topics that are fun to work at the beginning but we are always uh, being engineers we always think of some potential applications that would have an impact on the on the technology on nanotechnology and uh, some of the applications